Monkeybomb.com Hi, my name is Howie Gordon, and on behalf of Keybomb.com, welcome to our next round of Synth Basics tutorials. Today, we are going to quickly focus on the oscillator section, and I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that you can do with it. Uh, just to let you know, we're going to be using, once again, the subtractor synth from Reason, but don't let that stop you if you don't have it. You really can use any synth that's out there, or any subtractive synth, because they pretty much all work exactly the same. They're all going to have the same basic controls. So if you don't have this one, you can still use these techniques on whatever you do have. All right, let's take a look at the oscillator section. That's this section right here. Um, we have two oscillators on this particular synth, oscillator one and two. And just to let you uh, Reason users know, the subtractor has a neat little extra feature that allows you to adjust the phase of the particular waveform. But just for today's purposes, I've set that feature off. So that's not going to affect anything. That's why this red light is next to the little zero. Okay, so the phase differential knob is not functional right now. Okay, right now we only have one oscillator on, and we have it set to our trusty uh, sawtooth wave. And just a quick review of the controls. All oscillators will let you select the waveform, and then they'll let you tune it. Uh, usually you'll have these same or similar controls by octave, uh, by half step or semitone, and by scent or fine tuning. And just a quick review, if I play a key, I can change the tuning by octave. Okay, or by half step. Okay, or by fine tuning, I'm just going to hold down a key and hold down the fine tuning button, and then you can hear it slowly rise in pitch. Okay, and I'll go the other way. Now, first things first, we only have one oscillator going right now, so I'm going to go ahead and activate the second oscillator. And if you notice, its controls are set exactly the same as the first one. Sawtooth, wave, same octave, same tuning, same everything. Okay, so if I turn the second oscillator on, not much is really going to be that different. It's going to be louder, and you might hear some subtle phasing uh, going on. But, you know, it's not a huge difference. So here's with only one. Both. Okay, so not a huge difference. But one of the first things we can do is detune this by an octave. Okay, so I'm going to take this second one and drop it an octave. And right now, our mix knob here, which controls the balance between oscillator 1 and oscillator 2, is set right in the middle, so we're going to hear each oscillator equally. Now, if you have more than two oscillators, your particular synth might just have a level knob uh, next to each oscillator. The mix knob functions kind of like a balance, so if I turn it this way, it's all the way oscillator 1, if I turn it this way, it's all the way oscillator 2, and then any amount of level of mix in between, okay? But I'm going to leave it right in the center. Now, if I have this one on octave 4 and this one on octave lower, we immediately get... Great for synth bass, especially if I go in the lower octaves. So right off the bat, taking something as simple as two sawtooth waves and not really doing anything with them except for dropping one an octave can immediately give you uh, a much fatter sound. Another thing you can do is I can actually hit this up a couple of octaves. I'm going to go two octaves higher. Okay. Now, with the mix set the way it is, this might wind up making some eardrums bleed. This might be a lot more high-end information than we really want to get across. Okay. At a low volume, it's probably fine, but if you're taking this on stage, uh, you might want to be careful about that. But uh, one thing that I like to do with taking another oscillator up an octave or two is have it very low in the mix. Okay, And what that does, here I'll turn it all the way off, and slowly put it in. What it does is it adds kind of a nice high-end sheen to the sound without it being too noticeable. You know, without going 
there where it's really noticeable just kind of in the mix and here with without okay and again don't be afraid to change uh, different waveforms a sawtooth wave has a lot of high-end information and might be a little harsh for this trick one thing you might want to try is you know a triangle or a sine wave for that high octave without with all right another trick I'm gonna go put this back on a sawtooth wave is I'm gonna put it back so that they're the same octave and another trick you can try is tuning it by oh let's say a fifth so let's see that's going to be one two three four five six seven half steps up okay so I'll set the mix to the middle now with just one oscillator and if I activate that second one, okay, you get that sound, which is kind of a neat sound. And it doesn't just have to be a fifth, it can be anything you want. And also, again, don't be afraid to change the mix. Right now, that's 50% of each. I might only want to have that little extra fifth in there, just a little on the top. It's still very noticeable. Okay. There. It can be subtle or it can be really in your face. All right. I'm going to go ahead and set that back to zero. The last thing I want to introduce to you is this idea of fine tuning. You might wonder why I want to make a synth sound subtly out of tune, and it's a great way to add kind of a chorus effect or a thickening effect. Okay, so right now we have both oscillators on, okay, and they're both in tune. I'm going to go and make this top one a couple of cents sharp and already we have a huge difference in the sound okay so I'll turn the second one off and on so basically we have one oscillator that's perfectly in tune and one that's a little sharp here's a little trick I like to do just so that it doesn't sound sharp against anything else in the mix However much you put it sharp on the top, put it flat on the bottom. Great way of making things slightly out of tune. Great thickener, great chorus sound. Okay, this might be too much, so, you know, let's try three and three. Okay, obviously, the further apart they are, the more out of tune they're going to be. And you have to figure out what works for your taste and what works for your track. Lastly, let's go with a saw and a square. Add a tune. So, there we go. Tuning your oscillators. You have a million options. Please experiment, and if you like the video, please subscribe and leave your comments below so that we can all learn from each other. Thanks again. My name is Howie Gordon. I'll see you soon.